knew that he did something wrong. Oh my gosh, because of me, Jesus is going to be killed. He was sorry for what he did, and he was full of remorse, it said. So let me ask you a question. Since Judas knew himself to be a sinner, because he was sorry, because he was full of remorse, does that mean he repented? Do you think that means he repented? How about you? If you do something wrong and you know that you did something wrong and you are sorry for that, does that mean you repented? Does that mean that your sins are forgiven? If you say, ah, now that I know that I did wrong and I'm truly sorry and I said I'm sorry, I'm okay now. I have repented and my sins are forgiven. Is this true? What do you think? Well, what did Judas do when he was full of remorse? What did he do? Well, today's scripture tells us that he returned the money, right? He returned the 30 pieces of silver. When he realized he did wrong, he took action. He returned the money. He wasn't like hugging the money and say, oh, I'm sorry, but this money is mine. Oh, anyways, what's done is done. No. He took the money and he sent it back. He returned it. He was sorry. He was full of remorse. And he took action. Not only did he return the money, he made a confession. He said, what? I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. He knew it and he confessed it. And then he went and hanged himself. Pretty dr dramatic, right? You know, from a worldly perspective, some may consider Judas' action to be commendable. You know, he may be viewed as a man of honor, someone who took responsibility for his action. Some may say, wow, Judas, he wasn't a hypocrite like the other Christians. Judas was not only sorry, he just didn't say it. He took action. He was sincere. They may say, you know what? Look what he did. He admitted his wrong. He was sorry. He confessed. He returned the money. And he regretted his actions so much that he committed suicide. Well, what do you think? Was Judas a responsible, honorable man? Or was he a self-righteous fool? Let me take an example. Now, this example will never happen, but, but uh, just an example, okay? Let's say the pandemic is over, and we ca all come back to church, and I'm holding a seminar, and we're doing a Bible study together. And then you ask me a question, and I say to you, again, this will never happen, but it's just an example. You ask a question, I say, are you serious? What a stupid question. Do you even have a brain? If I said that, and after the Bible study, I went up to you and said, oh, I'm sorry I said those things to you in front of everybody. Will you forgive me? If I said that, will you forgive me? How about now, if I was full of tears, and I begged for your forgiveness, would you, would you forgive me then? No? Yes? No? Some of you are so hard to please. <laughs> You know, we live in a culture that believes that forgiveness has to be earned. We believe that forgiveness can and should be granted only when the person has suffered enough to be warranted forgiveness. We believe that forgiveness should be just and proportionate. Perhaps when Judas realized the magnitude of his wrong, when he realized that his wrong was so great that there is nothing he could do to justify his forgiveness, so he did the only thing that he could. He committed suicide. So, can what Judas did 
be considered as repentance? Do you think Judas received forgiveness? Do you think Jesus is in heaven with Jesus Christ right now? No? <laughs> well, I believe that Judas was not forgiven. I believe that Judas is not in heaven with Jesus Christ right now. You know why? Because Judas never asked for forgiveness. Judas recognized his sin. Good. He confessed his sin. Good. He even returned the money. Good. But he never asked for forgiveness. Instead, he did what he thought was right. Can you imagine if you do something wrong? Let's say Jimin did something really wrong at home. And he said, you know, I can never be forgiven. And he ran away from home. Do you think his parents would be, what, what a responsible guy. My son is so responsible. He took, he knew that he couldn't be forgiven, so he ran away. Oh, we're so happy. Do you think your friends, I um, mean, your parents would say that? Never. Your parents would be dying to find him. You know, if Jimmy did that, He'd be betraying his parents twice, right? First, by this, the, the, whatever wrong he did to his parents. And second, by betraying their love, by not going to them, but rather running away from them. Judas, to the point of death, never repented of the greatest sin. The sin of being the master of his own life. He was rebellious to the end to the teachings of Christ, to repent, come back, and love God with everything that he had. His action was based on what he believed right, rather than what he knew God wanted from him. It was like Jimin running away. The action was just killing God. You see, in every culture and belief system, forgiveness is earned. When the world feels that the wrongdoer has suffered enough to justify forgiveness, all but one. In Christianity, God died for us even before we confessed our sins, right? Yes. In Christianity, God chose to be crucified for us even before we realized ourselves as a sinner who needed forgiveness. God already paid the price. In Christianity, God loved us even when we were rebellious to the king by declaring ourselves to be king and doing whatever I want to do, right? Even when I didn't acknowledge God, he still loved us enough to die for us. In Christianity, God paid the price that we should have paid and is pleading with us, like a parent, come back to me. It's okay. Whatever wrong you did, I already paid the price and I need you back. Home with me. So, what are you to do after you realize your sin and saying you're sorry? Well, you have to ask for forgiveness. You see, God already paid the price for your sin so that he can forgive you. What's different in Christianity is not whether God will forgive, but whether you will receive forgiveness. Let me repeat this. In Christianity, it's not whether God will forgive, but whether you will receive forgiveness. It's not like any other religious system where we're just begging God to forgive me. What can I do to prove that I'm worthy of forgiveness? What should I do? It's not like that. In Christianity, he wants to forgive you. He desperately wants to forgive all of us. The question is whether we will receive forgiveness from God. As stated before, in other religions, people try to earn it, right? Some people hurt themselves. You know, there's religions where they whip themselves, they cut themselves. Some people try to do good things so they could 
outweigh the bad things that they did. People try to earn it. But in Christianity, God doesn't hold out on forgiveness until we make an effort to earn it. No, look at the prodigal son. The father was looking out the window, and even when his son was far off, he ran to his son barefooted because he was waiting and waiting and waiting for him to come home. God has already given every one of us the gift of forgiveness. It's up to us to either accept it or not. As we close today, I want to remind you that you must confess your sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. The thing that must be confessed is not only the wrong that you did. Understand? Of course, you have to ask for forgiveness for the wrong that you did. But after that, what you have to confess is that you broke God's heart. It's like when you ask for forgiveness from your parents. Of course, they want you to tell them what you are sorry for. Dad, Mom, I'm sorry for doing this and that. But what's more is, Mom and Dad, I'm sorry for breaking your heart. I'm sorry for you being stressed over me like this. I know you love me. The confession is not only about the sin, but about how you've hurt the other person. Whether it's God, your parents, your friends, your siblings. The confession has to be more than just, oh, you know, I did this wrong. You have to bring the heart, not the information. This week, if you discover that you have sinned against God, clearly make the confession by saying what you are sorry for and also that you hurt the other person, that you, you've you kind of betrayed their trust, betrayed their love. This week, if you discover you have done or said something wrong to your parents, siblings, friends, God, don't stop at just saying, I'm sorry, but continue by asking for forgiveness. Can we do that? All right, thank you for nodding. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. You are so good, Lord. I mean, I just can't say it enough. You are the Almighty God. And the only weakness you have is that you love us so much, Lord. That only person that could hurt you is us because you love us so much. And even though we hurt you, you wait for us with forgiveness in hand, just, just begging us, pleading us to come back to you. I pray that we will not be like Judas, Lord, who takes things into our own hands, who do what we think should be the right thing to do. But we give in to you, Lord. And say, so, Lord, forgive me, not only for the sins that I did, but for breaking your heart. And I want to come back to you, Lord. Help us to realize that the only thing that's important is our relationship with you. That everything else is intellectual. Everything else is knowledge-based. I pray that we will take that into our hearts and live this week. And I pray that whenever we discover we did something wrong, that we will be able to say, I'm sorry, and confess what we're sorry for, and ask for forgiveness, Lord. I also pray that this week you would keep us safe from coronavirus, that you would help us through this difficult online learning at school, Lord, that you would give us knowledge, wisdom, patience, consistency, steadfastness, so we could continue our studies, that we will not be fl flustered, be stressed, that we will not let that break our relationship with you or with our parents or with our siblings, Lord. I pray that we would have your heart. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, so before we uh, move into our small groups,
Uh, everyone, it's uh, Hannah's birthday coming up next week. Can we all unmute ourselves and let's sing a happy birthday song to Hannah, okay? Can we get everybody gallery view? Everybody unmute. 